Testing, testing, one, two. Hello, my name is Troy White. I'm a financial planner and investment manager at the firm Hoodoo Financial. We're a registered investment advisory and we have a fiduciary responsibility to our clients. We help primarily African-American investors uh, improve their, uh, their uh, financial position using financial planning and investment management tools. Uh, uh, we, uh, we have a, an investment platform uh, that uh, provides you with uh, 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 fractional shares, uh, ability to invest in fractional shares, yeah. uh, commission-free uh, trades when investing in, uh, into your portfolios that we build for you. So it's not stock picking. We're not stock picking at our firm. Uh, we're building portfolios from the ground up. So with your first dollar, we're building a portfolio. So we're really in it, you know, in it to win it. We're not playing games. Uh, you know, I would describe us as somewhat of a boutique firm, but boutique because of, um, the specialization that we have, and that is uh, helping our niche niche clientele, uh, because we have unique solutions. Because we understand we the, our community, our client base uh, has unique problems, and so we know what you're talking about. That's what I'm saying. So anyway, while I was listening to uh, KRS One, and so he was covering several topics, but you know, the foundation of hip hop and all of these things. And what he was diving into is somewhat of the comparison to what's happening now to what's happening then. And because of the corporate uh, entities took over and now we have boys as the hip hop voices, as the leaders. And, and they become the spokesmen for our community. So the, through the eyes of the others, their representation is what's given to them. And so now what's being given to them is these boys and the boy ideas. So I made some notes on what he was saying. So and he was one of the things he said at the foundation of hip hop is the attitude of the black man. He specifically was speaking to that, the attitude of the black man, but then he dived into, he didn't say, he dived into the fact that it is not a racial thing. He dived into a lot of the contributors from the earliest days that were uh, from Italy. Some of the the uh, some of those dudes that were doing the murals on the subways and the big walls, and some of the people who who was you know uh, break dancing and whatnot that helped you know launch this whole thing. They wasn't all black, but it's the African-American man's attitude that is the driving force of, of it all. Also, to, if it's any women listening, he touched on the black women in hip hop and something that I, I like to bite on is he touched on how uh, Sylvia Robinson, the former, uh, she's passed away uh, about a year or so ago, she founded uh, uh, Sugar Hill Records. And uh, so she brought, she's responsible for that moment when uh, KSOL 107.7 here in Open Play, Rapper's Delight on the radio. And I think it was 1978, 1979. And I was like, what is that? And I picked up the phone, to call my buddy, my friend that's across the street. And his phone was busy. I kept calling him to get him to listen to the song that's on KSO Well right now. But his phone was busy. And I said, I got to just run across the street. They finished playing the song. And I said, they said, we're going to play it again in a minute. So I'm going to run across and, and, and tell him. I'm going to bang on his door. I go to my front door. I open the door. There he go right there. He was like, man, we, your phone been busy, man. I've been trying to tell you to listen to this phone. I said, man, I've been trying to tell you the same thing. He came in the house. We cranked the volume up. They played uh, Rapper's Delight seven times in a row. That was the first time that, was, that sparked it. Uh, uh, my partner went on to, to have a, 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 a fantastic rap career. Uh, he's still rapping right now. Uh, he was Cool Rock J. Then he was, he was J-Dub. Uh, uh, you know, there's another, uh, 
and then now uh, uh, he on Instagram, he's selling cars and stuff, but you know, best rapper in the world, I guarantee you that, best rapper you've ever heard. Anyway, that's a side note. And, um, but the point is at the foundation is the entrepreneurialism of black women and the energy of black men. She found them. That was a put together group. There's no such group as the Sugar Hill Gang. She put that group together. There's no, uh, you know, independent records at that time. We was just getting this going. You know what I mean? I'm saying we, I'm talking about we as a community of people, you know, in this nation. You know, it, it, I mean, it, it was black labels for sure, but you know, give her a credit. She was a pioneer of what we got now. What kind of, when we talk about the hip hop labels we got now, we've taken over the world, literally. She started it. She started that business, this whole empire uh, uh, under the sun of hip hop. So anyway, I thought those were uh, some fantastic points he was making, but then he went into some of the criticism that you have to agree, you know, to some extent, we could, we could debate it. Uh, he said, today's rappers, and then I made my quote, I said, rhyme sayers, because, I mean, I know rappers when I hear a rapper, and I know people who is piecing together rhymes, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the, let's go into it. He said, to now they're discussing child's play and, and toy stories. They talking about, ooh, I, you know, they got shiny everything. They looking crazy. They, they, uh, they talking about the bling, the this, the that. Whereas the early days, the men that started this, the men, he kept coming back to the men that started this. The best rap song ever, the most l l longevity of message ever, you, arguably one of the best songs ever, especially delivering this type of information, uh, maybe parallel to Marvin Gaye's what's going on is Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, the message still resonates to today. Right now, you play that, every word he's saying is actual factual, relies up with what, what we have going on today. But what you're hearing today is lollipop music from, you know, tic tac rhymes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm criticizing. But, you know, and I'm doing that old back in my day. Yeah, because there's some people now that's good. So that argument is out. Garbage is garbage at any era. Because even back in my day, there was a lot of garbage. And then back in my where my father constantly used to hate, on, you know, and my, uh, relative, you know, older relatives. Oh, that's garbage. Oh, that's garbage. Well, you listening to, to the, um, I mean, their old music, you had a lot of bebop crap too, you know, so every era has garbage music, but hey, we point to it, that's what's up. So anyway, um, but the point there is today we hearing from boys, we're not hearing from men. And that, and I've, I've been uh, monitoring that for a long time, and specifically in the R&B field, you know, I, I could, that's where I originally come from is R&B and uh, funk and, you know, bands, you know, playing music. And that's men. You have to have skills and abilities, and, and, and which takes time. But now you go buy a hundred dollar laptop or, even, or just get on the phone. You, you, make, you can make music on your phone now. And, and, and yeah, it's gonna sound like that. It, you know, it's pre-programmed. Uh, what did George Clinton say? Yeah, it got funk elements, elements but uh, would you want some doobie in your funk? No, that stuff is 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 talking toy music. So you know, b b and I can say that because some of the stuff nowadays is fantastic. So you can't just say y'all like, oh, that's this and that. And, oh, it's good. No, y'all garbage. Some of y'all, and some of y'all ain't. But, you know, what makes money makes money. So that's another side of the equation, garbage or not. If somebody buying that garbage, sell that garbage. Shit. So, you know, that's true also. But, you know, that, that's just my two cents on the criticism. But the point there also, uh, you know, they constantly rapping about cars, jewelry, girls, drugs, fun, and games. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, none of those are man topics. If it's a man, a man is going to speak on something. 
some issues that resonate to the world, not just to help destroy the world. It's not boy mind things, it's man's minds of, of thought. So we need to get more men back into the hip hop because, well, partially because it's maturing. It's like I said, it's my, my era is the first one we started listening to it. And so we, it's, the men are the ones who made it through. Some of them are still there. Some of them are still spitting and doing good work. And, and you can see the maturity because at some point, it's, many of them were not. And so now as they, uh, as they mature, they have a better message and a better quality of delivery and, you know, better all around music, mu musicianship. Anyway, most rappers do not have, this is what killed me when he said that though. So he said all this, uh, right now they're boys, right? They talking about girls. You know, yeah, huh, huh, you know, twerk, this, that, that, you know, they, they want girls, but they don't have women. I was like, ooh. This like, and you know how you always hear a female, you can't handle a real woman. Psh, shut up. That's how uh, that makes a man feel, but you gotta admit it. It's like, because uh, uh, a woman is different, uh, but you have to be a man if you're gonna be with a woman. You can't be these boys, you know? And so, you know, it, 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 it is, the fundamental message behind that is it's time for hip hop to mature. And, and so you can say, oh, it's time for it to not only dive into what we don't dive into, but as I discussed that, you know, in reality, you should just take a look around because hip hop is mature. Because who are the ones who the look at the successful ones? The successful ones are married, and um, you know there's an exception to every rule. But you know, fundamentally, the think about those with longevity and 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 those who have uh, amassed a lot of wealth. The vast majority of them are married and have been married. They have this thing that's grounding them. It's a difference. It ain't like having a girlfriend. And so, you know, I'm not saying, hey, man, y'all need to get married. But I'm saying there's some reality to that that you have to face at some point that the society we lives in require somebody to pull your car that sometimes pull your strength, you know, be, look out for you, work with you. It, it requires two incomes, especially if you're an artist and entertainer. Your income is shoddy. It's sometimes. And, and even those who you think they've been super balling, they got a female that was keeping things steady. They was, but that artist that you think was always rich and all this, they was hidden for large chunks at times, but there were times where their wife was holding the whole fort down. Uh, if you know them, ask them, and they'll tell you that for certain. But I just know this to be the fact of the matter. And so, um, you know, that's just a little tidbit of advice, but let's dive into the subject matter that I wanted to discuss, and that's portfolios, because I keep mentioning it, saying, you know, you need, you know, investment portfolios, we help you get investment portfolio. And uh, do you know what an investment portfolio is, right? So I'm going to touch on uh, what that is, uh, the differences between a stock market portfolio and a real estate investment portfolio. And I'm going to talk about how they're tied together, how they work together, how we'd do it if we did it, and me and you were doing it, right? So hopefully we got time to, to kill all this because I just ran my mouth for half the video. All right, portfolio. So stock market portfolio. So, um, so portfolios, portfolios can be. Uh, Portfolios are fundamentally, did I write that too high? Yeah, yeah. Portfolios are fundamentally groupings of assets. So uh, they are your collection of assets. Portfolios are collections, collections of assets. Assets. And so, for instance, um, uh, for instance, see, 
uh, you may be familiar with the uh, in in the from the term being used in photography. So, for instance, a model will when she's seeking a new assignment, a, a new a modeling gig, she'll bring her portfolio to the uh, to the audition, and that is a collection of her photos and previous past work. Right. It's a, those are her best asset is proof of performance. So that is her per portfolio showing her a value. That is literally a value when the cryptocurrencies are value is rooted in proof of performance, proof of work. That's what that portfolio is, right? So um, that a model would give. So in the, in the case of, of investments, a collection of portfolio of assets is going to be collection of uh, stocks and uh, and uh, and bonds, mutual funds. That's an M. You just pen is playing out. You mutual funds, and uh, I'm going to add ETFs. I won't assume everybody knows. I'm kind of like taking it for granted that you already know what I'm what I'm talking about. So, trying not to. So, um, a portfolio is a collection of assets, and the and an investment portfolio when ref, when it's discussed in reference to a stock market portfolio is a collection of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs into a basket, that basket being an account, right? And so in your investment account. So the portfolio goes into your investment account. Now, because the type of investment account that your portfolio in is, is very significant because every investment account, that, or I should say, the t yes, every investment account has a different investment purpose. So the reason you have multiple accounts is usually tied to your goals. And because your goals are time to t have a time horizon, so your so I won't go too far in the time horizon today. So all of your goals exist on a time horizon and they have different start and end dates. And so those are different times that we need to achieve them. And different accounts that exist in America for American citizens have various tax structures, tax advantages and disadvantages. Therefore, based on your goal and the time horizon of your goal, we're going to select a certain account type. And so based on that account type, there are some of these assets that are more favorable and less favorable for the various account types. So, um, and I won't dive too far into that. But that's what a portfolio is, though. That's what the balancing act is. That's why it's important to have a portfolio. But as you start to understand is, oh, we need to know well, what you want a portfolio for. What are you doing? It's somewhat kind of like, you know, you want to say, what, man? I need money. That's what people say, right? But that's not good enough because there's never going to be just a thing you turn to twist the dial and money just keep falling out. We can we need to create that. And, and part of the way we create that where you can just turn it and money come out is by first building this. Because as we build this, then we are also going to build your uh, this is your uh, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. We're also going to have to have a real estate portfolio. And then I need to talk about why portfolio. Port, no, portfolio, bro. Portfolio, bro. Portfolio.
we uh, very important that we discuss why. Because I can tell, because based on this, half of y'all need to just go away. If you don't even have a reason why you're doing stuff, you're just thinking like, oh, I just need money. And nope, that's not going to work. You're going to fail. That's not going to happen. You have to have actual goals, something that we're trying to target and achieve. And because we need you to get, remember how I just said, there ain't going to be a time when it's a thing. And now you can twist and money keep going out there. But we could build a machine till you press the button and money keep generating. And that machine exists by us having this set up and this set up because we need passive income. And remember I said your, <clears throat> your goals exist on a time horizon, including real estate, including your legacy. That's one step after you, right? What did I say including real estate? I meant to say including retirement. So goals at the end include retirement and then after retirement is your legacy. So we need to in, be investing for down there. So what's after retirement is your legacy, right? So how am I going to invest after I'm gone? How can I keep helping my people? My people being my son and his family and his kids, which he ain't got no family yet. He's seven. And I got nieces and nephews in line. So uh, how can I help them and I'm gone? I need to build a machine where I can press the button and they can keep coming to the machine to get it and teach them how to work on the machine and make the machine bigger. Maybe add a couple more machines to the, to the mix. And so we have this, this constant factory, a money factory going on. And part of that is going to be real estate. But these work together. Uh, so you're going to have a lot of people say, no, nah, I don't know about them stocks. I do real estate. Or you're going to have people say, oh, no, nah, I don't know about that real estate. I do stock. Or I ain't talking to y'all. I'm talking to people who, who, who live in reality on earth, who trying to go all the way. Not just live your life. We're not talking about life cycle phases of investment, which is accumulate money, protect your money, and then distribute all your money to yourself until you die and there's nothing left. We ain't talking about that. We're talking about build the most maximum machine I can, can put together, put together the best plan I can to achieve all the goals I got, build a machine that's going to make that possible, from now into the future and beyond my life. That's why we build a real estate portfolio. So what would a real estate portfolio be? That would be property. The portfolio is gonna be properties that basically you, part of your, of, of the many strategies you have to acquire real estate and invest in real estate. Your portfolio only consists of the properties that you buy and hold. And properties that you buy and hold are going to be income generating properties. Generating properties. And so for income generating properties, we are we're collecting rents and leases, right? And so these are going to be multifamily apartment buildings. Um, it, again, it goes back to the strategy that you're going to take. It's no two of us that are alike. Everybody's life is different and your dreams is different and your wishes are different and your funny styles is different. You know, I don't like this, but I like that. Oh, I only like that. I don't like them. You know, it's, yeah, all of us got a little bit of that, right? So that really comes into play with people when investing in real estate because it's, it's tied to the ground. So people injecting their own personal little, you know, savviness, and it's, it's not savvy, but your savoir faire, you know, into the property. You want it to look pretty and all this. When in reality, you need to take your emotions out of it and, uh, you know, and, and, what what pays is what it is. I'm not saying be a slumlord, but do the maximum, the best, 
up to the point to where you are no longer receiving the financial benefit of for improving this property. And if it was a, a hunk of junk slum where it, improving it means you can't make no money, then you need to sell it and get rid of it because you don't need to be that type of person. So fundamentally, um, portfolios are collections of assets. Um, and as uh, individuals in America, uh, of which you are, you know, um, and I'm saying all of hip hop America, we need to buy back the block, buy back America. You know, we need to take it. We need to own it. We need to control the board. And the way we're going to do that is grab it and all. And then we need to be able to have the influence to be able to shut fools down when they do something against us. And how are we going to do that? We need to own them. Stocks and bonds and mutual funds and ETFs. In that, that means you are the owner of this company. So if a, if a company has some, has some uh, policy that is against our uh, agenda, then we pumping the brakes on them because we are the owner. The shareholders are up in arms and demand reciprocity. That's what's going to be. And otherwise, we're pulling the trigger, we're selling. It's an it's a, it's a exodus from, the, from, these, uh, from this stock. And so that's the type of influence we'll have if you put your money in the stock market. And if you buy back the block, get involved, get in the, get in the uh, real estate uh, game. And there's many ways to get into it to make profits and make money. And in doing so, as of course, it takes money to make money. So as you make some money, there's going to be a part, the whole part of your goal is to buy and hold property. And so however we fedangle it and get it under your control, the end result is for you to refinance it into your ownership to where you have the equity and you are buying and holding this property and receiving rental income from it. That is going to fuel your engine. And then we'll get to the entrepreneurship part, but we're not talking about that today. But, you know, for your marathon to continue, you're going to have to do this and this. You know, this is part of the blueprint. So anyway, my name is Troy D. White, Portfolio Manager at Hoodoo Financial. Uh, just sending out some good information. Hopefully it's useful to you. Thanks for listening. Holla back.